And as always, my classes will start with a meditation. So any comfortable meditative posture will do. And we're in a short class today, so it'll be a short meditation. So finding ourselves dropping in, coming to stillness. Breathe in through your nose. And out. Breathe in. And out. Find your own natural rhythm. On your next exhale, breathe out all of your air. On your next inhale, make it big. Hold the air in. And then release slowly. Exhaling all the air and leaving it out. So just holding the breath out. Gentle inhale. Let's start to wake the body up. Open the eyes, reach the arms long up overhead. And as you exhale, just take them on down by your side. Let's come into a tabletop position nice and quickly. We'll get moving pretty quick since it's a quick class. I'm going to start by warming up the legs. So in our tabletop position, just reach your right leg up in a 90 degree angle. So kind of pointing the toe up towards the ceiling, bending the knee. And then you're going to round the right knee in towards your armpit, kind of pushing the ground away like you're in cat pose. Inhale, reach the toe up. A little bit of a back bend. You can drop the belly and pull the heart through. And then exhale, round it. And keep going at your own pace. Thinking about that cat and cow-like movement. And when you round in, see if you can really get the knee into the armpit. Really tap the back of the right arm as high as you physically can. Let's do five. Good. Four. Keep pressing down through the fingertips for three. Two, and one, and release it. Let's switch it out, other side. Take that left knee, bend it, point the toe up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, round it. Knee taps the upper arm as high as you can, really focusing on rounding, going at your own pace. Cat and cow leg movements here, so rounding, chin towards the chest. Really energizing the ground away. Good. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Releasing that. All right, let's come into a puppy pose. So walk your hands as far forward as you can and just sink your chest down towards the ground, keeping the arms straight and active. And you can rather rest the forehead or the chin. And our hips are over our knees, so we're not sitting back, we're not in child's pose. Just think about 
about your heart really melting down. Let it surrender. Let it be heavy. We created all of this space in our rib cage, kind of opening through our side body. So as you're doing this, breathe into that space. Not limiting your breathing in any way. Good. Inhale, come on back up to tabletop. Now let's come into downward facing dog. So tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. With your hips nice and high, bend your knees, send your chest towards your knees. As much as you can, push through the palms, push through the fingertips. And if possible, maybe the ribcage even comes into contact with the upper thighs. You can bend the knees a lot to do that if you need. And then try to alternate straightening legs, so kind of pedaling out your dog one at a time. Back and forth, a few more. Good. Let's breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Find stillness in your downward facing dog. Spread the fingers, spread the toes, drive the heels down towards the ground, breathe. On your next inhale, roll yourself into your high plank, shoulders over the wrist. Dig the fingertips in, push the ground away. Take a look at the hips, make sure they're in line with the heels so that you're not hiking the hips up at all. And breathe here, five, four, three, two, and one. Come back to downward facing dog. Good. We're going to work our core a little bit here. Shift back into your high plank. Good. Now take your right knee and try to touch the back of the right arm, just like we did before when we were on our knees, but we're just a little bit higher up now. And then just step the foot back. And then switch. Left knee in and back. One at a time. We're just going to do four more on each side. Alternate. Three. Two. One more each side. Child's pose, take the knees down, rest. Good. On your next inhale, come on back up to tabletop position and then come onto your belly. So lying flat. If you've got anything in your way like I do, just move it out of your way. Once you're on your belly, come down to your forearms. Taking the forearms down, we'll come into our sphinx. The legs are about, I don't know, hip width distance, maybe a little wider. Press down through the forearms and open the chest. So roll the shoulder blades open, piercing the kind of shoulder blades together on your back and then down the back. Press the tops of the feet down, nice active in the legs. Think about your heart pulling through, almost like you're trying to drag yourself to the front of your mat. Really active five breaths here. One more. And exhale, release. Come to life flat. Let your spine be neutral for a moment. and slow come back up onto the forearms from here bend your right knee with your right knee bent I want you to try to lift the right knee off the ground it's not going to go super high but think about poking a hole in the ceiling with your toe so just a little bit of lift really you should feel like a lot of effort in that right glute keep pressing that left foot down lift the right leg as high as you can five four won't look like much but it feels like a lot three two 
and one. Take your right knee and open it out to the side now, coming into a half frog. So the right knee is straight out from the hip and the foot is straight out from the knee. Good. Keep setting the hips nice and down, even on that right side. Think about the right hip kind of being heavy. And then just walk your hands a little bit over towards that right leg. If this is too intense, stay centered. And you have an option here. We're going to stay for a few breaths. You can also straighten the right leg straight out if that's an option for you. Coming into a half split. Come back into center and then take that right leg back to where it started. Good. And let's switch sides. Bend your left knee this time. Start active in that right leg so the right foot's pushing down. Lift the left knee up as high as you can like you're going to poke a hole in the ceiling. Keep pressing down through the forearms. Keep sending the hips down energetically. Five, four, three, two, and one. Send the right knee out to the right now. Starting that half frog position, think heavy in that left hip. If you did so on the other side, the option is to straighten the leg, straight out from the hip. And then there's an option to walk the hands a little bit over to the left. back into center and then take that left leg back to where it started and lie flat. Take the hands in line with the chest, come to your high plank, push straight up to it and then exhale downward facing dog. Inhale, reach the right leg high, bend your right knee, open the right hip, stack it up towards the ceiling, send your left heel down towards the ground. Really try to point your right knee up, up, up towards the ceiling. Bring your heel to your glute as much as you can. So really opening through that hip. Chest spirals down to the ground. Just hold this five, four, three, two, one. Step the right foot between the front two hands. Come to warrior two, back heel spins down. Good. Heel to heel alignment, nice 90 degree in that front knee. Shoulders down the back, arms extended, good. Take a look towards that front hand. Good. We feel our tailbone tucking underneath us and our rib cage feel it kind of pulling in. So the space between our hip bone and our lower ribs feels a little bit small. We don't want to expand that space, we want to keep it compact. Good. Inhale. And then exhale, straighten the front leg. We're going to transition to our triangle. So take your back foot and walk it in just a hair. And then bump the hips back to the left. And then triangle. Reach the right hand forward. And then the right hand down. The left arm reaches up. Good. We're going to transition between this and our warrior two. So just take a breath first. Exhale, come to warrior two, bend your front knee, take the arms back up. The back foot can just stay where it is. Good. Come back to your triangle, straighten the front leg nice and slow. Transition. And go back and forth at your own pace. Inhale to come up. Exhale to triangle. And as you do so, feel this coming from the side body, the obliques. That's controlling this up and down like movement. And the arms just stay in this nice T shape. Nothing really changes other than your torso is coming up and down. And that front knee is bending or straightening. Make sure you don't feel pain behind the knee as you come to triangle. You can keep the right knee a little bent throughout this. Doesn't need to come all the way straight. Just waking up our body. 
A lot of weight on the outside of both feet throughout this. Let's do two more. Good. And last one. Finding your way back into your warrior two. Inhale. And exhale, take your hands down, frame your front foot. Good. Step it back. Option to vinyasa, lower, halfway, or all the way. Inhale through your upwards or your cobra. Exhale, down dog. Good. Inhale, reach the left leg high. Bend the knee, stack that left hip, pointing it up to the ceiling. Think about the left knee drawing up, like you want to point it up towards the ceiling. And think about the left heel towards your butt, so really lifting it high. Chest spirals down to the ground. Hold this, five. Right heel to the ground, four. Three. Two. And one. Step the left foot between the front two hands now. Back heel comes down, warrior two. Good. Shoulders down the back. Same thing, thinking about the hip bones and our rib cage. I had a teacher once describe it to me as wearing suspenders, which I think is a very helpful kind of visual cue. And you don't want to expand or open the suspenders, you want to keep them tucking down and in. So tightening those suspenders, shoulders down your back, five breaths. Shoulders are relaxed. And getting ready to come into that triangle. So straighten that front leg. If you need, bump that back foot in just a bit so it's a bit shorter front to back. Hips to the back. Reach that left arm forward. Left arm comes down, right arm comes up. Stay here for just a moment before we move here, kind of establishing the triangle. Good. And then transition, bend that left knee, come up as you inhale. Warrior two. And on your next exhale, coming back to triangle, just straightening the leg, pivoting down, using your core strength to move you here. Kind of just thinking about the mechanics of this. Your torso stays strong and straight. It's just your hips are pivoting back. Your leg is straightening and your torso comes more parallel to the ground. Let's do three more. Good. one. Come back to warrior two. Inhale. Exhale. Take your hands down. Frame your front foot. Step it back and vinyasa lowers or meet me in down dog. Good. From downward facing dog, shift yourself forward into your high plank once again. Inhale. Let's hold it here for a little bit of stability. Send the hips a little low. Dip into the fingertips. Really send them down energetically. Push the ground away. Elevate the space between your shoulder blades. Five, four, three, two, and one. Drop the knees down. Come to tabletop. Sit back to child's pose. Take a little break. When you're ready, come back into your high plank position. Come onto the palms, send the feet back. We're going to kind of alternate between side planks and forearm planks. I'll kind of go through it slow the first time. But start by rolling to the outside, um, opening up to your left. So reaching your left arm up, right arm is down, rolling onto the right side. Good. And you're kind of on the outside of that right foot, inside of the left foot. And the feet can either stay staggered or they can stack. Now nice and slow, we're going to kind of transition back to our high plank. But as we do so, our left forearm comes down. And then we switch over to our left side, 
reach the right arm up. So now you're in that kind of side forearm plank. And then back to the right arm down, flat on the palm, side plank on the right. Good. Back and forth, super slow. Left forearm comes down, reaching the right arm up. Good. Keep going at your own pace. Strengthening through the arms and the core. Nice, slow and controlled movement. Good. Let's do one more on that left side. And then the next time your right hand comes down, just come back into your high plank. Take a little breather, child's pose. We'll switch sides. All right, come on back to that high plank. This time, other side. So now we'll come onto our left side. So left hand down, right arm reaches up. So side plank on our left. And then as you exhale, right forearm slowly comes down, opening that left arm up to the ceiling now. Good. And then back and forth, left palm down, left side plank. Good, keep going. Back and forth. Really good. One more on each side. One more right forearm coming down. The next time that left palm comes down, just come into that high plank. Hold it here, five. High plank, four, three, two, one, we're gonna lower to the ground slow for five, four, three, two, and one. Good, let's open the chest. Take that right arm out in a goal pose shape, right out from the shoulder. Our left hand is in line with our chest and you're gonna roll yourself over onto your right side. Kind of stacking the hips, stacking the feet. And a few things to pay attention to here. The shoulders, you wanna kind of push them down the back. Shoulders away from the ears. And you can let your head rest. No need to hold it up. If it doesn't rest on the ground, then grab a block. There's a lot of variation in this pose. If you know any alternative, feel free. Sink into this posture for about five more deep breaths. Nice and slow, come back onto your belly. And let's switch it out. Take that left arm out in a goal pose shape. Right hand in line with our chest, rolls ourselves over onto our left side, rest that head. Nice and slow, come back onto your belly. And this time, take yourself back into Sphinx once again. Going to give ourselves a bit of a quad stretch here. So on our forearms, I want you to bend the right knee. Take the right arm, open it towards the right, see if you can grab hold of that right foot. Your left hand can kind of come more into center so it helps counterbalance you. Once you've got a hold of the right foot, see if you can pull it down as much as you can. And you're not trying to land the foot to the glute, you're kind of trying to land it to the outside of your hip. Now press that left foot actively down. 
And you want to feel like the right foot's resisting. So just as much as you're pulling the foot in, you're kicking that hand away. And if you're able, maybe you start to switch your shoulders so that they face towards the front. As much as possible. If they still open to the side, that's fine. A lot of effort. So kick the foot away, pull the foot in, both actions simultaneously. Left foot push, pushes down. Let's breathe here. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Release the right foot and switch it out. Bend that left knee, left hand reaches open, grabs hold, and pulls the foot down towards the outside of that left hip. Do your best to square your shoulders back to the front. And again, kicking into that hand, so a lot of resistance. Really active, kind of feels like you're trying to push your left knee down. That will really get into that. All the different leg muscles here. For five, four, three, two, and one. Release that, come to life flat on your belly. Work a little bit on our back strength. Take your hands in line with your chest. Make sure your elbows are kind of pointing back. You don't want them to be winging outwards. Press the tops of your feet down. Roll the shoulder blades on your back. Good. We're going to roll up into our cobra. So as you inhale, lift the chest up. Really lighten the hands. You want to be feeling this in the back. The back is working. The core is working. Our hands are not working a ton. They can work a little if you want to push yourself a little bit higher, but it doesn't need to be the majority of the work here. Elbows hugging in. Let's hold five. Legs are super active. Four. Three. Don't tense the shoulders in the neck. Two. And one. Relax it down flat. We're going to do that one again. Inhale, roll it up nice and high. As high as you're able to, you want to add a little bit of height, push through the palms, but still using our back strength here. Nice and neutral in the neck, just looking straight ahead or even a little bit down is fine. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release that, rest the head. Rest the arms. This time, interlace the hands behind the back. And the same thing, we're going to roll our shoulders onto our back, open our chest. That will already lift us a little bit off the ground. Press the tops of the feet down. We're going to come a little bit higher. So as you inhale, roll the chest up. Try your best to straighten the arms and lift the fists away from the low back. Breathe here, five. Press the tops of the feet down, four, three, Two, and one, release. Hands in line with your chest, push yourself up to your high plank, and then to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, reach your right leg up high. Good, exhale, step your right foot through, come to high lunge, sweep the arms up. Good. Bending into that front knee, nice and straight in that back leg as much as possible. Arms in line with the ears. Good. Shoulders are relaxing down our back. Sink the hips nice and low. Five breaths here. We're going to transition from here to our standing split. So inhale, reach it long. Exhale, hands come to the ground, framing the front foot and then launching the left leg up as high as it will go. Right leg is straight, left leg is straight and folding as much as you can. Forehead towards the shin. And wherever that left leg is, it's fine. Don't worry about it. 
but do try to engage it, that extra 10%, holding it here, five. If you'd like to challenge your balance, take both hands behind your calf or your right ankle. Four, three, two, one. Stay here. Don't move yet. Just take your hands flat to the ground if you can. Either stay in your standing split, or if you want to play around, you can try for a little handstand hop. Just bend your right knee, and then little hop. Keep that left leg high. Think right knee to chest, little hop. If this is not in the cards, just hold your standing split. But we've got five, four, three, two, and one. Step the left foot back, come back into your high lunge. Sweep the arms up. Good. <sighs> three, five, four, three, two, and one. This time transitioning to our warrior three. Take the hands down by your side, inhale. Exhale, lean it forward, launch it up onto that right leg. Left leg is straight, right leg is straight. This time, left leg is parallel, chest is parallel. Hands reaching back, open the chest. Five, four, three, two, and one. Step their left foot back once again, high lunge. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, the hands come down. Step it back, vinyasa lower or skip it you can always skip these come to downward good inhale reach the left leg up exhale step it through high lunge sweeping your arms up once you feel ready taking a moment establishing ourselves here do your best to straighten the back leg as much as you can. Good. Two more breaths. Hands are going to come down, frame the front foot, standing split. Launch the right leg up, straighten the left leg, straighten the right leg. Good. Same thing here. Think about forehead towards your shin. You can challenge your balance, taking both hands behind your left leg. Now we're going to stay here. I'm going to give you that option for the handstand hop. So the hands come flat to the ground. You bend into your left knee and think right leg high. Bend into the left knee, knee to chest. Kick the heel to the butt, even if it's super small. We're just really working a lot of strength here, whether or not you come into handstand or even if you care not at all about handstands. This still works a lot of the body. Four, three, two, and one, step that right leg back, high lunge, sweep the arms up. Settling into this. Good. Take the hands down by your side. Open up the chest here, inhale. Exhale, warrior three, lean it forward, launch into that warrior three. Right leg straightens, left leg straightens. The shoulders opening down the back. Find your balance. Better than me. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Right foot steps back. High lunge. Good. Three inhale. Exhale. Take the hands down. Frame your front foot. Step it back. Vinyasa. Last one. Meeting and downward. Good. Child's pose. Take the knees down. And your next inhale, come back into your tabletop position. We're going to do one more little kind of core work. 
And I recommend having a block or two if you've got to. Then take one underneath each hand if you do not, like me. One block is enough. You can take both hands down to the block. And you're in kind of a tabletop-like position. So really similar to how we started class, we did that kind of knee into the armpit. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to try, get the knee up really high, and then tap with our right foot the block. So that you have to really curl it in. You have to get the right knee really high and try to tap that block. And as much as you do that, you start to really get into the core here. And of course, if you don't have a block, you can do this on the ground. You can just come onto the tippy toes and try your best just to tap the back of your uh, wrist. Same thing. So just focus on the right side for now. So knee into armpit, straighten the leg, tapping the back of that right, uh, I keep calling it an ankle, a wrist. Good. And that last little bit really is where you dig deep into your core strength. And this type of work is going to help for a lot of things. It's going to help for arm balancing. It also just helps that movement of stepping to the front of your mat. So whenever a yoga teacher says lift your right leg high and then step it through, if you have trouble with that step through, then this kind of core strength that we're working on here is paramount. This will get you there. And if it's too hard to tap the back, just try your best. It doesn't have to get all the way there. Let's just do four, three, two, last one. Good. All right, now we're going to go on to the other side. So pull that left knee into your armpit and then tap the back of your block or your hands. And just keep going here, same thing. As you do this thing, rounding, the more space you create, by pushing the ground away and doming the body up, the easier and the more clearance you'll have. And that applies to the step through. So if it's hard to step through, it may be that you're not finding enough of that lift to give yourself the space. So this is a good drill to kind of understand that movement. Let's do five. Let's do four. And three. Two, good, and one. Someone's at like my door right now, don't be alarmed. <laughs> all right, come back into your tabletop position. And from here, we're gonna come to lie all the way flat on our belly once again. Give ourselves a little break. Rest the head. And then nice and easy, just roll yourself over onto your back. Centering yourself on your yoga mat. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Hugging them in, draw some little circles. And we're going to do a gentle spinal twist. So take your arms into a T-shape. And take your knees into kind of a 90 degree shape or a tabletop shape. Let your legs fall over to the right, letting your left hip stack up towards the ceiling and trying to keep your left shoulder heavy down. Maybe look over your left shoulder. And relaxing through the face. you lie here, feel the belly full of air. And then switch it out. Take the knees back up into center. And then let them fall over towards the left. Chest up towards the ceiling, heavy right shoulder. Look over towards the right. Breathing, loading up the belly. And 
relaxing that little space between the eyebrows. Coming back up to center. Take both of your feet to the ground. Let's give ourselves a hip stretch. Cross the right leg over the left, and we'll come into our reclining pigeon. So I want you to open that right knee as much away from you as you can, and then pull the legs both in towards the chest. The hands can either loop behind the thigh or all the way to the shin. And then really pull the legs in. Flex that right foot, stay really active. Pay attention to the low back. We tend to round it up here because it's, we're tight in our hips, but try not to, to keep the hips down. And let's take about five deep breaths here. Maybe letting the eyes close. it out. Take the left foot back down and swap. Take that left leg and cross it over and just opening the left knee as much as possible and flexing the left foot over the top of that right thigh. Then pull the legs in, threading the hands either to the top of the shin or behind the thigh. Active in that left foot. Good, let's release it. We're gonna come into our final resting pose. And before we do, if there's anything else that you feel like your body needs, please feel free. Take any other final postures. Otherwise, whenever you're ready, come into your Shavasana, lying flat on your back, legs extended, arms by your side. Maybe allowing the eyes to close. Let's you lie on your back. Take a nice deep inhale through your nose. And open your mouth, exhale. Breathe in. Exhale out the mouth. Do one more like that. Breathe in. And out. Breathing naturally now. Ready, start to move the toes and the fingers a bit. 
take a deep inhale. Big exhale, maybe sigh it out. <sighs> Bend the knees, hug them in towards your chest, maybe grabbing the fronts of the shins. And just rock yourself left and right a few times. Side to side. And when you're ready, we're going to start to come back up to seated. Roll yourself over to one side first. And then pushing down to the palm. Lift yourself back into seated. Nice and slow. Maybe the eyes stay closed. If that's what you prefer. As we sit up nice and tall, we find length in our spine and a lightness in our shoulders. As you inhale, shrug the shoulders up towards your ears. Big exhale, release them. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, release. One more. Release. Take the hands to prayer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.